take, take a canoe panel that you love and trace it on a piece of hardboard. Okay, It could be yes. thick cardboard or uh, this is masonite. And you're just going to trace half of the paddle, and you're going to draw a nice center line. I see. Okay, right through. Yeah, this would be the, the uh, where you would keep it hung on the uh, hung on a. Yeah, you drill a hole to something. hang it on the yeah. wall. But I also drill a hole so that I can see my center line oh, okay. on I my see. blank. Okay. So th the next thing you want to do is choose your material. Now, what is this wood? This is uh, a lightly colored western red cedar. It's a very soft wood. Um, it's very popular for boat building because it has a high tensile strength, but it's really but it's light. lightweight. Yeah. yeah. Before before we go to break and uh, and come back and show us show us how to make this, I just wanted to say that Home Depot sent us this workbench, which look how nice and long it is. Wow, that was Isn't nice. Isn't that great? Them, yeah. yeah. And this is like three hundred and ninety-five dollars, and you can really oh, it's heavy duty. That's beautiful. Do you have a good workshop at home? I do. Yeah. I mean, yep. but this you could might call this a love table. Why? <laughs> Why? Well, if you're, if you're making paddles on it and, uh, you know, working with your hands is a, f a version of love. Oh, okay. Very romantic, this guy, Nick Overman. <laughs> Come on. Very nice. So, um, so, you're, so now once you trace it, yeah, then you're you, going to cut it out with what kind of saw? You can cut it out on a band saw if you have one or just a little jigsaw that you can get at the hard, hardware store. Yeah. You would cut that but you out. Would, you'd have to, uh, would you have to put, uh, put it in a vise or something? No, I mean, ideally... You would, if you have a love table such as this bench, you would clamp it to the table. Yeah. Um, but this wood is so light that I can actually do it oh, freehand. Oh, okay. Uh, should I take a crack at it? Yeah, definitely. And I'm glad you're wearing protective uh, goggles. Always protect yep. your eyes. Always, always. And, and often you want to protect your ears as well. But if you're a beginner, you plan on a good long weekend. Yes. Yeah, so now what are you doing? This is this has been cut out of the wood. Yeah. So we've cut out our piece and we've used a, a sander and a block plane to get it nicely down to our line. Feels good. And then yeah, it's nice and smooth. Now we want to take a combination square, which is an adjustable ruler, and set it to half the the width of our paddle and draw a center line. Oh, I see. I use a black ink pen instead of a pencil so that I can see my lines really well. Yeah. And you're gonna do that all the way around. Okay, so you don't wanna, you wanna take an even amount off each side. Yeah. So that you have a well-balanced paddle. It's key to always maintain these nice center lines right. um, for the shaping that we do. Once you have your center lines drawn, we're gonna clamp it to our workbench now these are so easy. Oh. oh, they're wonderful. Now there's one I left out one little piece. We're also once we have this center line done, we're going to adjust our piece to go back and make a second line an eighth of an inch to either side of our center line so that you have a stripe oh, okay. a quarter so inch. Oh, okay. So that's not the center line that's your cut to. Your center line is the center of these exactly. three lines. Okay. And the reason is we're going to shave this blade down to this final quarter Using inch. Using what kind of tool? We're going to use a, a block plane. Okay. So how long does so this you have to you really have to go down quite far. Yeah, now. this process you get some elbow grease and put on some music, uh, and that takes a while. Mm. And you eventually, and what you want to do is keep checking your progress with a straight edge until eventually you've achieved a flat plane from this thickness oh. down to your quarter inch. You've got your line drawn, so you use your straight edge now and you're going from this peak all the way down, so you With end up... the same up, plane? Yeah. And eventually, the, the plane can't operate because it becomes a sort of a curved surface, and that's where our friend the spoke shave comes in. Okay. And the spoke shave is just like a block plane, except it's foreshortened and has two handles. And it's called that because it was originally used to make square pieces of wood into spokes for wooden wheels. Oh, for the carriages. Yeah. So it, it does the same thing. It draws the blade along the wood mm. and shaves it away. Oh, look, this is even better kindling. And you can, you can get into more detail, and that allows you to remove this sort of shoulder meat material. I see. Cre creating the final quarter-inch thickness so that eventually 
Oh. Will look like this. Oh, so we've gotten way down here. Yeah. And you've got oh, you've removed yes. all that blade material. So the object of a good paddle is to it wants to be as lightweight as possible, but have the strength to go through thousands of, of paddlings. Um, and depending on how what kind of water you're in, if it's shallow, you want to have a good strong tip so that you can push off on rocks. Um, it all depends on on yeah. what kind of paddling you get into. This feels good.